All right, so uh, let's just start with the, uh, uh, the new information. Um, some scientists have discovered the ultimate buzz kill. The ultimate buzz kill. Uh, this is the information that takes all the fun out of trying to get high. And it's this stuff called dynorphin. Now, what happens is that everything that gets you high triggers a surge of dopamine. And that gives you that activated go, go, go feeling. All of the substances that get you high produce that surge of dopamine. Superphysiologic, above normal levels of dopamine result in dynorphin elevation. So, dynorphin is a chemical one. In the body. You're familiar with endorphins. Okay, and then we also have dynorphins. You can think of dynorphins as D-I-E norphins because they make you feel dead and sluggish and slow. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry. An increase in dopamine triggers an increase in dynorphins as well. Right. Okay. And as the dynorphins elevate, it's like here's the drug, and it, and what would be uh, a good buzz, so the, the area on top of the line is the degree of the buzz that a person gets, the euphoria. Okay, and you can see that they're taking more and more drug, but what's happening is that as the dynorphins go up, they're getting less and less of a euphoric surge. So the buzz is up here, and as this, as the dynorphins go up and up and up, after a while, they're getting very little buzz, very little euphoric effect. So this dynorphin uh, hypothesis is the new information that above normal levels of dopamine are brought back down by dynorphin elevation. And so what happens then when the substance wears off, the dynorphin levels are, are high, the dopamine levels are low, is and the bad? person crashes. Okay. I can uh, print all these out and get them to you if you want. But yeah, that's what I was just saying. Sure. Susan is, we'll make sure yeah. we all get copies yeah. of this stuff. When we so now, um, let's back up just a little bit. And yes. you, is that the opponent process? Yes, this is okay. the opponent. Exactly. 1973 Solomon et al. Mm -hmm. The opponent process. We found the explanation to the opponent process. The opponent process is that dynorphins elevate. And that's what causes the decreasing euphoric effect. Okay. So opiates are part of our stress response modulation pathway. Okay. <coughs> and one of the ways they do that is by dampening the effect of adrenaline, which is why it makes us sleepy. Opiates dampen the effect of adrenaline. The body compensates by elevating adrenaline levels, and then the increased adrenaline results in anxiety, irritability, sweating, and restlessness. Okay? Alcohol inhibits glutamate. Glutamate is an activating neurotransmitter. The peaks of alcohol, which suppress glutamate, cause the glutamate levels to rise up to 300% normal. And this is what causes the anxiety, restlessness, and insomnia in alcohol. Withdrawal. So when you put together the uh, uh, this picture, you can see that, yep, the body adjusts, and it does a really fine job of it. So, substance abuse is actually self-abuse, as in dynorphin cultivation. And opiates result in increased adrenaline and dynorphin. Alcohol results in elevated glutamate and dynorphin. Benzodiazepines result in diminished GABA and elevated dynorphin. Nicotine, elevated dynorphin. 
Now, don't worry about writing all these down because we're going to go over this in greater detail so that you guys will be relaxed and you'll, you'll have it just down pat. Okay? <laughs> right. Marijuana results in the elevated dynorphin and some elevation of adrenaline, and it suppresses an endomite, which we'll talk about later. And amphetamine and cocaine result in elevated dynorphin. So these are the basic mechanisms of addiction.